Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Uh, it's such an honor uh, to be, you know, here. You know, it's always an honor for me to have the opportunity to share some of the things, you know, that God has placed on my heart, you know, for, for us as a church, as a city uh, in this season. And I don't know about you, but this week was pretty intense for me. I don't know what your week was like, but, you know, we have a, a sick child and like, it's just been like an insane week. But I think there's just something so beautiful that in the midst of all of it, we can still come here and we can celebrate Jesus together. You know, I think that's just such a beautiful place is that no matter how hard our week was, we come here to refocus our minds back to Jesus. We come back here to refocus our hearts uh, to him. And I think that's beautiful about this Christmas season, and that's really the point, is for us to really remember that Jesus is with us, right? No matter what we go through, no matter what you're walking through, Jesus is with you wherever you go. And we need to have this realization that that is actually true. I think some of us, we've seen it. We see Emmanuel, God with us, like that's a cool slogan, but it's, we have to realize it's actually true. God is, Jesus is with you wherever you go, no matter the circumstance, no matter the fear, no matter what you're facing, Jesus is with you wherever you are and wherever you go. And that's something that we have to come to this understanding of. And Merry Christmas, though. I'm excited again for today. And just before I dive into my message, I really want to invite you out Christmas Eve, uh, which is on Saturday. This Saturday at 4 p.m., we're having a Christmas Eve service here at the church. And, you know, we've called it Hope is Here. And the reason why is because I don't know if, you've, if you know what COVID is and you know what, what, what all the things that have gone on the past two years. What I realized as God was speaking to me about this Christmas is that we need to understand hope is here. The hope of the world is here. We have access to him. And so I want to encourage you to come out Christmas Eve, de December 24th at 4 p.m. I also want to encourage you, you know, bring somebody with you. Bring somebody with you to hear this message of hope, to hear it's going to be, you know, an hour-long service. It's going to be, you know, not super long. We're going to be singing some songs, and I'm going to be sharing a quick message on hope. So I want to encourage you again to come out and bring somebody with you. It's going to be an absolutely incredible, incredible service. And then just real quick, we, we're not going to be having a Sunday gathering on December 25th. Um, and so I want to encourage you that day, make sure you're spending time with your family. Some of my favorite Christmas traditions is one thing we always do every Christmas as a family is we get a birthday cake and we sing happy birthday to Jesus. And so maybe you could try that too. It's pretty cute actually. The, the candles blow themselves out. I'm just joking. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Sorry. Can you imagine if that happened? I'm just kidding. Wow, that's like the first time I thought about that. Now this Christmas is gonna happen. I was like, guess what? You know, anyway. But yeah, I wanna encourage you to do, you know, create some, some traditions. You know, have some fun this Christmas. It's gonna be, you know, a good, a good time. And, you know, if you were with us past two weeks and we've started this series, right? The blank that stole Christmas. And of course, as we all know, there's so many things that try and come and steal our joy, steal our hope, steal our peace, steal it all, especially around this Christmas season. You know, I think oftentimes everything that we go through tries to distract us from the reality and the point of what it's about. And you know, two weeks ago, Beth and I, my wife, we, we shared this, this message called the schedule that stole Christmas. And we were talking about just how do we create better schedules heading into this really busy season to not burn ourselves out, to take care of our family, things like that. And then last week, we, uh, I preached a message, the, uh, the grief that stole Christmas. We were talking about how sometimes Christmas, we have a blue Christmas. There's a lot of things that we've gone through that are caused, you know, grief in our life. And today, I want to speak the last part of this message, in, or this series, and it's called The Drama That Stole Christmas. The Drama. Okay, if you've ever been to like a Christmas gathering, you know how much drama can ensue, especially in people you love the most. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, it almost seems like there's less drama when you don't know people because everyone's just too shy to be weird, right? But when it's like family, you're like, I'm just gonna be me. And it's like, wow, there's a lot of drama that comes up around Christmas time. And if you're married, you might know when you first get married, you have to make some decisions on what Christmas events or gatherings you're gonna go to. Because oftentimes, you and your spouse have completely different rituals or practices when it comes to Christmas. And you have to make decisions. And how many know, doesn't matter what decision you make, somebody's going to be mad at you. They're going to be like, hey, what about us? Why 
do you love them more than us? You're like, what? Drama comes at Christmas time, and it's absolutely crazy. And if you have kids, you've bought them gifts before, right? Have you ever bought your kid the wrong thing? And they're like, do you even love me? Right? You know, you ever heard of that? Jane's too, too young for that, but I know it's going to come. How come you didn't give me the new iPhone 13? Why did you just give me a t-shirt? It's like, well, because you don't need a phone, you're two, right? You know? But there's drama that comes up. And sometimes, you know, it might be the turkey that you've spent so long cooking, yet your, your grandpa comes and says, that's the worst turkey I've ever ate in my whole life. Ever had that happen? You cook something, you spend. I'm not, like, I'm not talking about something small, like something you big and the people are like, I hate that. Right? Or maybe you cook it and you're like, we need to order in, right? We're ordering Chinese food tonight because this is horrible, right? Ever have that happen too? You know, or you might have an uncle who might get a little bit intoxicated around Christmas time. And he might start saying things and sharing his latest conspiracy theory. And you're like, just roll your eyes because you're like, I don't care. Right? There's so many things, right, that come up. The drama that ensues around Christmas time. And we oftentimes don't really prepare for it. And because we don't prepare for it, every year it comes so unexpectedly that we don't actually know what to do. And I have four drama types that I created. These are, these are all me, okay? If they're on the internet, they stole it from me, okay? But I created these in drama types. Number one is you're the drama connoisseur. I think I said that wrong. The word, that doesn't matter. But this is the person. I did say it wrong, didn't I? Yeah, of course, classic. It's not an English word, that's why. This is a person who is the expert at drama. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> this drama follows you wherever you go. It doesn't matter like where you are. It's like drama will be there, right? It's like drama, you're like, I, I, I create it. Like I'm just a professional. I'm a pro when it comes to drama. Wherever I go, drama comes. We've mastered the art of creating and feeding into drama because we just love it. Like it's like we're passionate about people fighting or passionate about weird things. Like, like some of us, that's the way we are. We're the connoisseur. Is that right? Nailed it. Connoisseur. I, I wrote that word too and I said it properly and then you see it and you're like, I don't know how to say that. But anyway. Number two is the drama magnet. You know, this might be you. It's like you see drama starting and you can't help yourself. It's like you're like, I don't want to. I don't want to. And all of a sudden you're like running towards it. You know what I'm talking about? It's like you, you, it's like you, you know what's happening. You're like, no, close my ears. Stop, stop, stop. And you're like, no, I have to say something. I have to share my, my thoughts. I have to. I have to be a part of this. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe that's you. You're just attracted. Like, you just, you just like, are drawn to drama. Maybe that's, that's you. And maybe it's you. Where there is gossip, right? You will be there. It's like, gossip, boom. You just show up. Like, I love this, right? Number three is you're the drama avoider. You know what I'm talking about? It's like drama comes, you're like, I'm, I am going on my phone and I'm playing Angry Birds, right? I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm not being a part of this. I'm going to put on Candy Crush and I'm not going to be a part of this drama. You're like, you're like, oh, I forgot to buy a turkey. It's like, it's already on the table. You're like, I got to go to the store and get the turkey. And so, like, you just avoid it at all costs. It's like, I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to see this. I'm just going to run away. And so what happens is you stop going to things because you know drama is going to be there. So you're like, I don't even want to be a part of this. And then the last thing that I see, which I think, you know, we should try and enter into is I call it the drama destroyer. It's like, that's a superhero. If Marvel came up with the drama destroyer, it would make millions. And it would be my idea, which would be amazing. But this is the person where you see drama, you see injustice, you see things happening. And in your heart, there's this, there's this thing that builds up. You're saying, this isn't right. You know, how what's going on isn't right. And so what you do is you try and do your best to come in and get rid of drama. You're like, I'm, I'm going to come in. I'm going to kick the doors down. I'm going to rip apart things. I'm going to make sure that everyone is treated fairly. And justice and integrity is what we want to be about. And maybe you see yourself in those drama people. Maybe you, you know, you, you just love it or maybe you're attracted to it. Or maybe you just avoid it or maybe you just do your best to try and just end it once and for all, right? You want to be the peacemaker. And, you know, it's interesting when we think about drama, you know, Peter wrote some things uh, that caused the most drama, whether we're the ones creating it, maybe we're the ones experiencing it, or how many of you know, drama has this tendency to drag us right into it? 
right? And so Peter, this is what he says in 1 Peter 2, 1 to 3. This is what he says. It's so powerful. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow even grow up into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Put away all malice and all deceit and all hypocrisy and all envy and all slander. How many of you guys are like, that's my Christmas every year? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's like, there's just deceit all over the place. There's hypocrisy, there's slander, there's malice. Everywhere I look, in my family or in my friends or at work, this is what I see. And I was actually talking to a lady in our church uh, recently about this. And actually, she, she shared this verse with me when she was talking about just some of the drama she was experiencing at work. And she was sharing, like, like as God was speaking, you know, these verses to her when it came to drama, she was sharing with me that, that, that she doesn't want to get dragged into it because, again, how easy is it when drama's there? We're, we want to just do whatever we can to either be a part of it, to create it, or stop it. And so we, we're, like, drawn to drama. And, and she was saying these things and how she says these things when she read this, you know, really spoke to her about this is how we combat drama. This is actually how we fight it in our lives. This is how we actually conquer it, how we actually step into it, not be afraid of it, but actually be a person who can come in and actually bring peace in the most chaotic moment. You know, this is what she was sharing with me. And, and it's interesting because after he gives this list, right? Do this, put away this, get rid of this. What does he say? He says, if we do this and we, and we want Jesus, if we, if we desperately desire peace, if we desperately desire joy, if we desperately desire Jesus what will happen is that we will grow. And what will we grow into? We will grow into the mind and the heart of Jesus, right? It says, if indeed you have tested that the Lord is good, we need to start tasting and seeing how good God is, and then we can start to actually put away all these things that come up in relationships, come up at work, all this malice and deceit and hypocrisy that comes up. We say, I don't want anything to do with that because what I have is better, what I have is actually better, and I'm going to share Jesus. I'm going to share hope. I'm going to share joy with you so that we, we can all go forward together. And the drama can actually sometimes dissipate because there's so much hope in the room. We've seen how good God is. And this verse comes right after in uh, 1 Peter 1, right? So 1 and then 2, 1 Peter 2. But we're in 1 Peter 1 now. Math. My Jane counted to 20 yesterday, and I was like, I can barely do that. You know, like, it was amazing. She did skip a couple numbers, but she did pretty good. I was actually pretty proud of her. But this is right after Peter has this call for the church to be holy, for us as believers to be holy. And this is what it says, 1 Peter 1, 13 to 15 says this, Therefore, preparing your minds for action, I love this part, and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the, to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. All right, so this is the preface to put away this. So he's saying, this is what we long for. And how do we do that? We put away malice. We put away deceit. We put it away because this is how we're supposed to live. As children of God, as, as children of him and I have three things today that I think really will help us, and they've helped me, and I'm not perfect. You know, there's moments where I'm like, I got to be a part of the drama, you know? It's like I got to Google what's going on with the celebrities because I got to know what's going on, right? I need to know. Anyway, it's weird. But number one is this, prepare your mind. Are you prepared for action? If there's one thing that I hate, one thing I despise is running with no purpose. You know what I'm talking about? Like, what I mean by this is, like, why, why would anyone run for fun? And maybe you like running, and that's fine, but I just don't understand the why. Either you're running in one place on a machine, or you're running in circles. And to me, I'm like, why? Like, why, why is it that, that people like to run? It doesn't make sense to me, and so I'm trying to understand, and so I researched marathons. 
like probably one of the hardest, you know, running things that people can do. And I researched, how would I prepare to run a marathon, okay? I was, I was terrified with the results. I was, I'm not like joking you. Like I was like, how is this even humanly possible, okay? So they say that if you want to learn to run a marathon for the first time, it, it could take you five to six hours. I can barely watch a TV show for five to six hours on a couch. Five to six hours straight running. I'm like, like, why? Right? Like, I don't, five hours of running? And so I kept researching more. And they say that it can, it'll take you 15 to 20 weeks to get your body ready to run 42 kilometers. Marathon, 42 kilometers. And then I research, okay, what's the world record, right? If, if I could run a marathon in 15 to 20 weeks in two, uh, uh, five to six hours, what's the record? The record is just over or just under in two hours. What they're saying is that me, compared to a professional or a person who mastered it, I'll take three times as long to do it. It'll take me three times as long to run a marathon than somebody who's been doing it for a long, 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 long time. If you want to become the master of something, you need to prepare to do it. If you want to become the master, if you want to be able to step into a moment and put away all these things, you need to prepare yourself in advance in order to do it. It's the same thing. Like we need to discipline ourselves to prepare our minds for action, right? That's what it says in 1, Peter, uh, uh, verse thir- 1 Peter 1 verse 13. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, do what? Set your hope fully on the grace that be brought to you by the revelation of Jesus. We need to prepare our minds that even when chaos is around, even when hope seems to not be there and despair is in the air, what we need to realize is that we have our hope in Jesus. We've prepared our minds that no matter what, no matter the circumstance, we're going to be okay because our eyes and minds are fixated on the man who's on the throne. Jesus is moving And so are you prepared this Christmas for the drama that might show up? Or are you going into Christmas a little maybe naive that everything's just going to be fine, right? It might not be. You know, I think some of us, we have people in our lives, you know, maybe siblings who won't talk to our parents because of a fight that happened 30, 40, 50 years ago. You know, we see this in families so much where families are torn apart because of a moment where trust was broken, a moment where things were said that shouldn't have been. And so what we do is we, that moment defines our future and we allow all these things to get in the way of deep relationship. I think we all have people we know that have had moments like this in their families or in their friends where something happened and all of a sudden there's a break of relationship and there wasn't a lot of healing that took place. Prepare your minds for action and be sober-minded. We have to set our hope fully on Jesus. You know, this is how we prepare our minds, is putting our minds on Jesus. It's like preparing for a marathon, maybe 15 to 20 weeks. It might not happen in a moment. It might not happen where all of a sudden you are walking with more joy and more peace. Where drama seems to not stop following you and you can actually bring, you know, peace and hope to chaos. Set your minds on Jesus? Are you preparing to have self-control to not walk into the trap of gossip that'll come up? Or to not let the drama steal your hope or steal your joy or steal your peace? And sometimes drama can even try and steal our faith in Jesus, right? Because we see so much brokenness in our families or whatever. We're like, why? Are you preparing yourself to actually deal with it properly this year? And in Proverbs 16, 28, I love this. A dishonest man spreads strife and a whisper separates close friends. I think we've all seen this. Or something said in private or something said that, 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 that we shared, you know, in confidence with somebody. All of a sudden we're hearing from other people about what we shared with them. And how many know that breaks trust in seconds? Somebody that you've built decades sometimes of trust in can be broken in one moment where somebody shares something that you were talking to them about that you're really struggling with and they find out about it. That can destroy things. And how many of us know this is really what we see so much in our world? 
We feel like we're carriers of information, so we feel like we have to share the information, even if it's not our story to tell. So nowadays, for me, if I have somebody come to me and they share something, they share something with me, there's moments where I won't even, I won't even tell Beth unless I've had permission. Because for me, it's like I want to honor this person as best as I can with what they're walking through. Because if the story breaks out, you never know what's going to happen because there's all these things that can come up. So I just want to encourage you to, if someone shares something with you, you know, if you don't have permission to share their story, don't share it. It's their story. It's their story to share. But Because drama will destroy anything. We're back. But, and gossip can separate the closest of friends. And we need to shut it down whenever we see it and wherever we hear it. To shut it down. Saying, you know, hey, they're not in the room. I don't think we should have this conversation. I don't want to have this conversation. Because the reality is this, is that if someone is talking to you about someone who isn't in the room, they're talking about you when you're not in the room. This is how you can tell, right? If someone always comes to you and just shares the most recent drama at work or the most recent drama in the family, they're sharing your stuff with them too. Like that's the reality is, is, is we need to realize that, that when we see this, we need to be people who try and shut it down. And so our takeaway for this point today is this, is that drama comes suddenly and unexpectedly. And if you haven't prepared uh, your mind to handle it, you will become a victim to it. That's what happens with drama. We need to prepare our minds in advance for what's going to happen. And that's by putting our eyes on Jesus. And then number two is put away. <laughs> right? Put away. And I don't know about you. Maybe you consider yourself to be uh, a great cook. Anyone consider themselves a great cook? Like one, two, wow, never do a potluck, you know, so I'm just joking. Two people, I was expecting more. I consider myself to be a pretty good cook, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm, I know it sounds arrogant and, but it's true, like, I'm excellent at cooking. The other day I opened up a box of my craft dinner and I poured it in a pot, I added some salt to it, and then I drained it and I added some, the cheese that's pre-made, Always pre-made, never homemade, always pre-made. That's my rule. So, I'm just joking. And so I poured in the cheese and I made this. It was excellent. I'm telling you, it was so good. So good. I've actually started a new endeavor. I'm like learning how to make grilled cheese sandwiches now, which is like, like I'm, yeah, if ever you want one, call somebody else. You know, I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not a great cook. I, I like to cook. It's not something that I enjoy. But how many of y'all know maybe you bake or you cook? How many of y'all need to have a clean kitchen when you start cooking? Right? You need to have a clean kitchen when you start baking. It's like, if it's not clean, it's like your mind can't even handle the thought of making more mess. You know what I'm talking about? And, and I think it's so interesting when, when, he, when he says here, put away. I find this interesting in, the, in this verse, right? He says, so put away all malice, put away all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and slander. Put these things away. And I think it's interesting because when we put things away, it actually opens our minds to think clearer. Right, when we actually, they're not in front of us. We've put them in the cupboard. We've put them behind us. We put them away. We can actually look forward with more confidence and we can look more forward with more creativity. Why? Because we're actually seeing clearly. We're not being blinded by hypocrisy. We're not being blinded by deceit. We're not being blinded by it anymore that we actually just put it away. We clean it up so that way we can have a clean slate as we go forward. If you want to have a great Christmas that drama might not be as impactful on you, learn to put away these things so that when you enter into the place, hypocrisy will flips. You know, make sure that deceit is not where you're living. Put it away. You know, one translation of this is actually says, rid yourselves. Like, not just like, Put it away, but rid yourselves of these things. Don't just, don't just put it in the cupboard, throw it in the trash. How many of y'all have someone in your family when the ketchup bottle's empty, it just stays in the fridge for month after month after month, and you're like, it's a reminder to buy a new one. No, it's, no, it's not. It's just frustrating, and you're like, oh, it's empty, I forgot, and you put it back. It's like, throw it in the garbage. I think a lot of us, this is what we do. We, we put it away, and then we go right back to it every time. We, we go back to it. Because that's where we're comfortable. Because that's where we feel like we're loved. We feel like if we can share the gossip, if we have the news that we can share, if we feel we have it, we feel like it's our right to share it. Because why? Because we feel like we can gain something. We feel like we can gain approval. We feel like we can gain from somebody. So we use somebody else's story to build ourselves. We need to throw it away. 
and not go back to it. Leave it and go forward. Leave it in the past where it belongs. We have to replace those things with the things that will build you up and build up other people. And how do we do this? We spend time with Jesus. We spend time in the scriptures. We spend time in prayer. And then we will learn and grow as a believer, right? It says to, to desire spiritual milk to help us grow as believers. That's what we need to focus on. And, you will, and when we do this, we'll learn to desire him. The more we get to know him, the more we, the more we experience him, the more we realize and we taste that the Lord is good, right? In Psalm 34, 8, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see. We have to rid ourselves of the things that we tend to fall into. You know, our takeaway for this is we put things away so, so that so that they don't distract us from the greatest call this Christmas, which is love one another. These things will distract you. They will take you away from bringing joy because they're just trying to be a part. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'll have to fix it, but love one another. The greatest call we have this Christmas is to love one another. You know, my third thought today is this is make a trade. Make a trade. And in sports, I don't know if you're a sports fan. I'm a big sports fan. I'm a big Patriots fan. We're not very good anymore, but that's okay. I'm a big sports fan. And if you like sports, the inevitable part about sports is trades. And what it is is, is teams will make trades that they think will help them uh, be, get better, whether it's for a short term or they trade to make a long-term investment into their future. This is kind of the point of trading, maybe to get rid of some money or whatever. And sometimes your favorite teams make horrible trades that they regret, and they're just like horrible, and you're like so upset about it. You know, and oftentimes you see players get traded from one team to another, and all of a sudden they start having these like Hall of Fame type careers. You know what I'm talking about? And I was, I was looking up the, the, some of the biggest trades in sports history, some of the biggest athletes that were traded, and maybe you know some of these guys, but Kobe Bryant was traded. He actually was, he wasn't drafted by the Lakers. He got traded. And then Drew Brees, one of the Hall, like Hall of Fame quarterback, he never, he got traded. And Wayne Gretzky got traded. You know what I'm talking about? Horrible. Eric Lindros got traded, Randy Moss, Scotty Pippen, Shaquille O'Neal, Alex Rodriguez, Ken Griffey Jr. Like if, if you know these guys, these are like some of the greatest athletes at their, at their level in the world. And they got traded. And it's so interesting that when we sometimes trade something, we feel like we're going to lose it. But in reality, what God is going to give you back is so much greater than you can ever imagine. When we make a trade in our life, it can actually transfer us from what was to what, we're, what it's supposed to be. I want to encourage you that we need to make a trade this Christmas, a trade that will build a better future and help us become the people we were created to be in the image and likeness of God with his heart and his mind and not ours. Here are the trades we need to make. Number one is we need to trade malice for kindness. Is our hearts towards one another kind? You know, Proverbs eleven seventeen, 17, right? A man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. That's the reality. Are you willing to trade malice for kindness? Number two, trade deceit for truth. This trade deceit for truth. John 8, 31 to 32, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. 32, and you will know the truth, and the truth may set you free. That's what truth can do in our lives. Some of our families, our businesses, our workplaces are so filled with lies and so filled with deceit that we don't even know what to believe. You know what I'm talking about? Some of us, we have people in our family, they're just like, they're like pathological liars, and you just don't know. They always come to Christmas with all these stories. You're like, I hope they're true. You know, like, I hope this is going well for you. We need to trade deceit for truth, and the truth will set you free when you abide in Jesus. The next trade we need to make is we need to trade hypocrisy for honesty. To trade hypocrisy for honesty. In Proverbs 19.1, better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in his speech and is a fool. Honesty will build trust back up. 
You may have broken trust in a relationship, which I think we all have done in moments. How do we build it back up? Start being honest. Start walking in integrity. The next trade we need to make is we need to trade envy for generosity. When we look around us, how many times do, are people getting the things that you wanted for Christmas maybe? Right? And it's funny, you know, Christmas Day, it's like every post is just like, Merry Christmas, by the way, I got a new phone. You know, it's like they have like throw in my new gift, right? But, you know, it's, we can't be envious of one another. We have to be generous to one another. In Proverbs 11, verse 24 to 25, one gives freely yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched and the one who waters will himself be watered. Let's be generous. Let's not be jealous. Let's not be envious. Let's be generous this Christmas. Generous with our time. Generous with our love. Generous with our kindness. Generous with our hope. Generous with our peace. We're carriers of all this. And our world is in a deficit when it comes to hope right now. Our world is in a deficit when it comes to peace and joy right now. And our responsibility is to be carriers of that to people this Christian. I truly believe that. And then the last trade we need to make is this. We need to trade slander for honor. Now I'm going to invite up um, Micah to just come play some notes. <laughs> you know, I, I was funny. Um, again, like I told you, this week was absolutely insane. And I'm going to get back to this, but I thought you this. I'm telling you, like, like there's, it was just, like, so up and down. Like, not sleeping, in you know, a sick child, and it's, like, so, so up and down. And, and then I, I, was, I was preparing for today, and, it, and I was, like, it's, like, this, this kind of weird thought in my mind of, like, man, we just need joy so desperately because we don't know what people are going through. We don't know what people are walking through. And, and so just love each other. You know, let's be kind. But anyway, slander for honor. And I love this. Romans 10. It, I love this because Romans 12 verse 10. Love one another with brotherly affection and outdo one another in showing honor. Outdo each other. It's like be competitive when it comes to honoring each other. There's so many things that dishonor one another. I think for some of us, we can probably make a bigger list of how to dishonor somebody than to honor somebody. I think some of us, we could. We could make a bigger list on, on how many times we've been dishonored in our life rather than actually been honored. Let us outdo each other in honor. Let's not talk poorly about each other. Let's not talk poorly about the people in our family that make us so upset. When people start talking trash about them, you say, no, I love them. That's my brother. Yeah, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of things that have happened, but I love them deeply. Let us talk kindly and be nice to each other. That's what we need. Like we need to honor one another and outdo each other in showing honor. Those are the trades that we need to make. I'm going to read them one more time here. Number one is let's trade malice for kindness. Number two, let's trade deceit for truth. Trade hypocrisy for honesty. Trade envy for generosity. And trade slander for honor. Let's make these trades. Because I truly, I'm telling you, if you make these, your life will become so much more beautiful. People will actually want to be around you more. You're going to actually have longer lasting relationships and friendships. Because you honor the people and you love the people and you're generous and you're honest. And our takeaway for this is make a trade. Trade your natural for God's supernatural. Being honest is not always easy. Being transparent and being generous is not always easy. It's not always easy to honor somebody who's been cruel to you. It's not always easy to be kind. Sometimes we need Jesus to actually make those things happen. Honesty takes courage. Telling the truth takes courage. Being kind takes courage. Being generous takes faith. 
But let's make these trades this Christmas. Let's trade drama for peace. Rather than carrying drama wherever we go, right? Let's carry peace wherever we go. Let's carry faith and joy wherever we go. Don't let drama steal your Christmases because it's going to try. It's going to try and come and steal your Christmas. But let's prepare our minds before to be calm during. To not get dragged in. And let's be people of honor and integrity as we go into this season. Don't let it steal your Christmas. Drama is going to happen, okay, like we, we're human beings. And there's so many things that cause drama in our lives. I, I just mentioned some. There's a lot. But our attitude going in will actually determine, determine the outcome. And let's bring peace. Let's bring joy. Let's bring faith. Let's bring hope. You know, this Christmas, as I think we truly, we truly need it. I truly believe that. So I'm going to pray for us. So we're heading into this Christmas. God, I thank you, first of all, that you came, that you are with us, Emmanuel. And I thank you that we don't have to be afraid. I thank you that we can walk in the things you've called us to walk in. You can, we can walk in kindness. We can walk in truth. We can walk in honesty. We can walk in generosity. And we can walk in honor. God, I thank you that even though for some of us it's gonna be hard, God, give us the faith, give us the strength, give us the courage to be carriers of that peace this year as we go into the season. I thank you that we are the light of the world. God, help us not cover our light. Help us walk with your courage as we do this. God, I thank you for all of us here as we go into this season. God, I thank you that you give us everything we need. Thank you that you're our provider. You provide everything we need. God, I thank you that you are our healer. You'll hear, you'll hear the most broken of minds. You'll hear the most broken of relationships. You will hear, heal what needs to be healed. And God, I thank you that those of us who are going into the season discouraged, those of us going into the season fearful, what the future is going to look like, God, I thank you that you are with us. You'll meet us there. In Jesus' name, amen.